morning. Today is a full day. So we will be at four different campuses, three high schools, one middle school. My district is so small and I'm so grateful for that. There is two larger traditional high schools and then two high schools that are more specialized. First and second period will be here, one of our main high schools. Okay, I'm also posting a story on my Instagram page to go ahead and gather some questions from y'all and I'll be answering them here in the video. This is my outfit of the day. This is Cupid's favorite social worker made by one of my social work besties. I made it to my first campus. It's time to send a pass. These are my passes that I keep in my little highlighter bags. I'm gonna write a pass for in the next period. Let me show you around this office space. done with my session which went really really well now what I do is I take my quick note got a referral to over here I want to show you real quick and this is my notes that I have so I want to show you a template that I made this is my template basically a soap note I find that this is an easy way for me to take quick notes after a session so I don't forget what happened in session. I do not take notes during my session. I don't believe in taking notes. I believe in being fully present. Let me see if I have any questions coming into my Instagram account here. First one, what's the biggest difference you notice from school social work to school therapist? Biggest difference is I don't have an office. I kind of rely on the spaces around my district in the campuses that I visit, which I mean, this is just beautiful. I have a main office, but it's not housed at a school. It's a separate office. So I do bounce around a lot. I prefer that because I'm more of an introvert, so I just kind of get what I need to get done. I don't have to deal with like campus politics, drama, things like that, which I prefer. As far as my work, the biggest difference is now I, as a school-based therapist, with my clinical license, I get to meet with students one-on-one -on -one and spend that time, the full 45 minutes to an hour, an elective period with them, processing things like anxiety, stress, anger, coping skills. When you're a school social worker, the whole campus is on your caseload and you don't have the time unless you build it in to do individual type counseling or guidance. You are just kind of going crisis to crisis. But I'd say that's the biggest difference is I get to actually meet one-on-one -on -one with the students, build a treatment plan, try different interventions, meet with students eight to 12 weeks and really work on the deeper issues that they are, are experiencing. Let's get going. Ah. High school number one is done. I'm gonna go grab lunch really quick and it's honestly a girl lunch because I just have a bunch of like little snacks today. I don't like to eat anything too heavy. I really don't have a space or time to eat that much so if you're looking at this for self-care, my Wednesdays, not the best self-care because I don't really stop for a longer lunch. I just kind of snack throughout the day. So I have a snack bag with me. Had my coffee this morning and um, some water and things like that. But I'm gonna go document a bit, check in at my main office. So that's where we're off to right now. Someone was asking if I work with tier one. It just depends. Mental health does not discriminate at all. Um, of course, there's risk factors that are gonna create a higher percentage of, of tier three referrals for mental health. I think the interesting thing about my caseload right now is it's a lot of freshmen and a lot of sixth graders. So those bigger transitional phases, they're having the most need right now as far as anger management, anxiety, coping skills, stress, 
those types of things. That's what I'm working on, assisting students with and things like that. All right, so yeah, here we are. That was our short drive and now we are at the main hub, my little office space. It's been like springtime here. just spilt over and is turning itself on but we are here at my second campus of the day I have a few clients here but today we're meeting with one I don't know if I'm gonna be able to parable I'll park this Let's see if I can do that did it before my sessions I like to spray this aromatherapy this is stress relief it's from Bath and Body Works it has um, eucalyptus oil to clear the mind and then tea extract to calm any feelings of uncertainty all right so let's head into our session first I need to check to see how I did on this parking space oh my god yes I'd say I did Pretty darn good. This is my second little office space. <laughs> Let's get started on my third session of the day. So I'm on my way to my last two sessions. One will be a termination session at the high school and then the other will be a session where we focus more on grief things of that nature that's going to be at the middle school I do prioritize termination even though it's tough and it's difficult because I want my students to begin to practice some of the skills that we are trying out some of the interventions I want to see if they're working and there's no other way to do that than pulling the training wheels off and just you know kids are so resilient so a lot of times when I terminate I don't get too many students coming back and to me that's a sign of success um, some do some do I've had some students come back the next year or ref self refer again to counseling services and we talk about that during termination the fact that the center is always there to be able to assist the goal is always connecting them to their campus so making sure they have someone on campus because I'm not housed at a campus again that's one of the biggest differences having them feel supported on campus without this external person coming in which is me it feels really good when a student trusts you and only you but that is also a big red flag um, of counter transfer and transference issues happening and our clients should never be dependent upon their counselor or their therapist they should really start developing the skills to be able to empower themselves that's the core that's the backbone of social work that's why I love the fact that my degree my background is in social work I have the clinical license I'm looking for a parking spot now Ooh. this is not a good parking guys I have to walk all the way back this way so I'm gonna get spoiled and see if I can find a parking a little bit closer to the front office hopefully maybe I feel the day kind of catching up with me and I'm gonna need a lot of energy for my next client so we're gonna push through I'm just trying to show a realistic day because sometimes not sometimes I, I do preach self-care a lot but hey y'all are seeing the truth if I get sick later in the month it's because I didn't slow down to take care of myself and that'll be on me but let's go we are at campus so we're gonna head in now yes I just wanted to give you the update
update that we have completed services to counseling services for her. Okay, and so I wanted to let you know that if you had any other concerns or anything came up, if you were wanting to continue services in the future for some reason or whatnot, you're welcome to give the care center another call. But she had made a lot of progress and she was opening up a lot of, about a lot. And so I hope that she found it helpful. Mm hmm Yes. Mm hmm Family therapy. Sounds good. Okay, have a great day. Thanks. Bye-bye. I just finished with my day. It's been a long day. I'm exhausted. So I have started to utilize this time for self-care, which is nice. So I have my change of clothes. I have my I'm going to leave the shirt on and then switch into some tennies. I do want to see if any questions came in. Is the price of UT worth it? Yikes, guys. Uh, you may know that I graduated from UT Austin.